Hallelujah, Jesus. We reverence you in all of your glory. You are our Lord. You are our shepherd. You are our shield. You are our butler, mighty God. We want to thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are good. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. We just want to magnify you. And we want to say glory, hallelujah, for you are a good God. Hallelujah. Right there, wherever you are. I want you to bless the Lord, hallelujah. In whatever fashion it may take, I just want you to bless the Lord. I want you to praise the King of glory, your Redeemer, your friend. We just want to honor the King Jesus, for he is worthy to be praised. Yes, God, he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Adonai Elohim El Shaddai. Yes, that is his name. Ah, what a glorious name it is. Well, how much power it carries. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your holy name this evening. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, we invite your presence into our midst and we ask that you lead and guide us, O Lord. Father God, we pray that we would be encouraged once more. We pray, Father God, and that we would desire to follow and abide by your precepts, your commandments. May they be like sweet honey, Father God, to our lips. Uh, may we not depart from them. Mighty God, may we not, Father God, forget how good they are to be in good standing and in right standing with your word and your order. Oh, Father God, we thank you even more, oh God, for where we may grow faint, where we may grow, Father God, weak, we ask, oh God, that you would encourage us evermore. Oh, mighty God, we just reverence you and we say thank you for all your commandments. We say thank you for all your precepts. We thank you, Father God, for correction. We thank you, Father God, for the stillness and patience of your answers. Uh, Father God, for impatiently waiting, we are refined and finely tuned. Uh, Father God, we thank you, God, that we are like pearls, uh, mighty God, the pearls of the ocean. Uh, Father God, for through the pressing and the waiting, we yet come forth, uh, mighty God, as pearls, uh, priceless, oh Father God, but ever so treasured in your eyes. Uh, we are the jewels and we are the apple of your eye. Oh Father God, may our love for you continue to proceed. Uh, oh God, the love that you had for us. Oh Father, we glorify your name today. We say thank you you for you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be lifted up you are worthy to be acknowledged for all that you have done for us in our lives and all that you continue to do today and all that you'll continue to do tomorrow father god we we just lift up praise onto your name hallelujah we just glorify you we say thank you for you are worthy oh god hallelujah jesus hallelujah father god we ask, O oh Lord, upon this evening that you, Lord, will continue to lift us up, encourage us, motivate us, Father God, where we've become routine, mundane, mediocrity. Father God, we pray, O oh Lord, that you, Father God, will put fire to our feet, that you put fire to our bones. O oh, Holy Father. We invite you once more again. May we not just, Father God, release it with our lips, but may our hearts, Father God, be set before you, the hearts to receive what you're getting ready to do. Oh, Holy Father, we bless your holy name, for you are worthy. Father God, position our hearts, oh God, as soil to receive seed from you. Father God, would you water the seeds that you have already planted within us? Oh, Father God, would you harvest, oh God, the seeds that you have already tilled from seasons past. Oh, Father God, may we not be barren lambs in this season. But, Father God, we pray, oh Lord, that we begin to see fruit that comes from the soil that you have tilled and the soil in which you have planted seed and the soil in which you have watered. Father God, may your precepts, your orders, and your commandments and laws guide us as we continue, Father God, to bring forth the fruit that you have planted. Almighty God, we bless your holy name this evening. We thank you for that which you've begun. We thank you for that which we'll continue to do. For you are worthy to be praised. For there is none like you, O oh God. Father God, we bless your holy name. For you are where our salvation lies. And we fall in love with you again and again and again. Father God, may we fall in love with you again, again and again. May we, Father God, let go 
again and again and again. Father God, how we begun on this walk, Father God. May we do what needs to be done again, again, and again to continue to see your glory manifested in this place, manifested within our temples, manifested within our world again and again and again. Remind us of your salvation. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone to Omega Church International Ministries Bible Study this evening. Again, again, again. There's something here for you again here at Omega Church and in the Word. Those of you tuning in online on YouTube and Facebook on the FM dial, we want to welcome you. And as we continue throughout this evening and the Word is brought forth before you with the keynote, we're going to enter a time of worship. We're going to have the Omega Church International Ministries worship team lead you in a time of worship this evening. Let's bless the Lord as they come on and minister in worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been sent to rob it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. I've been sent to rob it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are 
stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. Bigger than the biggest, you are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Miracle worker, promise keeper, 
light and the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You wipe away our tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus, you wipe away our tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the How was I you? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Jesus. Lord. Says, Hallelujah. I tell you, he is a way maker. He is a way maker. I tell you, he is a way maker. Hallelujah. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. He is a way maker. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is Ooh, he is a way maker. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. For all my strength comes from him. For he is my source. He is my light and my countenance. He is a way maker. He is my God. He is my king, my redeemer, and my friend. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. All my help comes from the king, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone to the Omega Church International Ministries Bible Study this evening. We are journeying through the 66 books of the Bible. And this evening, our layover is in Exodus 26. He has thus been ravishing in the word of God. And even more, as you continue to dive deeper, it fills and satisfies your bones. Hallelujah. Exodus 26, and it begins. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twained linen, and blue and purple and scarlet. With cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits. And every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together, one to another. And the other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. And thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain, from the selvage in the coupling. And likewise shalt thou make in the uttermost edge of another curtain, in the coupling of the second, Fifty loops shalt thou make in one curtain, and fifty loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain. That is in the hooping of the second, and the looping may take hold one another. And thou shalt make fifty tatches of gold, and couple the curtains together with the tatches, and it shall be one tabernacle. And thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle, Eleven curtains shalt thou make, and the eleventh of one curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and the eleventh curtain shalt thou be all of one measure, and thou shalt couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves, and shalt double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. 
And thou shalt make 50 loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling and 50 loops in the edge of the curtain which coupleth the second. And thou shalt make 50 tatches of brass and put the tatches into the loops and the couple the tent together that it may be one and the remnant that remain it of the curtains of the tent and half curtain that remain it shall hang over the back side of the tabernacle and a cubit on one side and a cubit on the other side of that which remain it in the length of the curtains of the tent it shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover it and thou shalt make a covering for the tent of rams skins dyed red and a covering above of, above of badger skins and thou shalt make boards for the tabernacle of a shatim wood standing up ten cubits shall be the length of a board and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board two tenons shall there be in one board set it order one against another thus shalt thou make for all the boards of the tabernacle and thou shalt make the boards of the tabernacle 20 boards on the south side southward and thou shalt make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards two sockets under one board for his two tenons and two sockets under another board for his two tenons and for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side there shall be 20 boards and there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the side of the tabernacle westward, thou shalt make six boards. And two boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they shall be coupled together beneath. And they shall be coupled together above the head of it unto one ring. Thus shall it be for them both, they shall be for the two corners. And they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver, 16 sockets, two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. And thou shalt make bars just a team wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for the two sides westward. And the middle bar in the midst of the board shall reach them end to end and thou shalt overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold for places for the bars. And thou shalt overlay the bars with gold and thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was shewed thee in the mount. And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twain linen of cunning work and cherubim shall it be made. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shatim wood, overlaid with gold. Their hook shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches, and thou shalt make it bring in thither, within the veil the ark of the testimony. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony, in the most holy place. And thou shalt set the ta table without the veil and the land and the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle towards the south. And thou shalt put the table on the north side and thou shalt make a hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twain linen wrought with needlework and thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shatim wood and overlay them with gold and their hooks shall be of gold and thou shalt cast five sockets of brass for them they bless the reading of the word saying glory be to the father the son and the holy spirit amen come on somebody tell the lord thank you tonight Hallelujah, come on is that all right on a bible class that you will praise god Come on, anybody feel like just taking about 30 seconds of your time just to praise God? Come on, somebody. That means you open your mouth and just, Lord, I exalt you. God, I praise you. God, I worship you. God, I adore you. Thank you for living to see another Thursday night Bible study, Lord. 
I just honor you tonight with all that is within me. I will bless your holy name. Amen. Somebody ought to know that God is good. Amen. And all the time. Come on, tell the Lord Jesus thank you. Amen. Praise God. We meet again. God bless you, family. Amen. I trust you're doing okay. Welcome to Bible class, everyone. We welcome everyone online. We welcome everybody that's joining us from near and far tonight. Amen. Bible class is now in the sanctuary. Is that all right? Good to see all of you tonight. Amen. Praise God. Welcome everyone that's viewing on the television and everyone that's listening. Good evening, madam. Good evening, everybody. And God bless you all and welcome to Bible class. Amen. Mom, you doing all right? You look like you're ready for Bible class. I'm so happy to have my mom here with me. Can I give her a round of applause? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we welcome everyone online and thank you so much for joining us. Hello, Monique. Uh, God bless you, my sister. Thank you for joining us, Monique Brown, and everyone that's listening by way of FM radio. Tonight, Minister Upon, I've just read for us Exodus, the 26th chapter. Can we change that camera, please? Amen. Thank you very much. Exodus, the 26th chapter. And if I was to ask tonight, what exactly did you get from that passage of scripture that Minister Pana just read? Anybody? And to all of our viewers and listeners out there in TV land and radio land, we're going through the Bible and tonight uh, we're looking at Exodus the 26th chapter. Amen. And we have just read from verse 1 until verse 37. 37 long verses in this passage of scripture. And those of you that heard it tonight, what stood out from that passage of scripture? Anybody? 37 verses of the word of God. Let's talk. Anything stood out? You read it, Minister Apana. What stood out? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Coming towards the end. Hallelujah. Verse towards the latter end when he speaks about the holy of holy place. Mm -hmm. This is verse 33. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the class and shalt thou bring hither wherein the veil the ark of the testimony and mm -hmm. the veil shall separate unto you between the holy place and the most holy amen good that's a good point we're going to be addressing that tonight as well now as you know tonight i would like to talk to you and you are to talk to yourself and here is it i'm going to give you a subtopic from what we have tonight Put the table on the north side. Come on, tell your neighbor, put the table on the north side. Put the table on the north side. <laughs> put the table on the north side. How many of you think to put the table on the north side? What is he saying? In this passage of scripture that we're looking at in this Bible class, looking at Exodus chapter 26, from verse 1 to 37. We're not going to be able tonight to dissect all the 37 verses in this class. But I am certain that we'll be able to rip apart verse 1, verse 33, verse 34, verse 35. But let's go back to the, 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 the tenor of the text. God called Moses at this point and said to Moses, Moses... I want you to do what? Build me a tabernacle. Come with me now. Build me a tabernacle. Now what's the tabernacle that God called Moses to build in that time? The tabernacle that God called Moses to build, what is that? That is a mobile sanctuary. Come on with me now. So God called Moses and said, build me a mobile sanctuary out of curtains. You and I tonight that are here in this Bible class, we are in a sanctuary that is not mobile. Are you with me? 
so they were traveling through the wilderness they were going to find a land flowing with milk and honey. honey but while they were traveling to the land flowing with milk and honey God demanded of his people to worship him they were coming from a country and a place where the Egyptian did not allow them to worship the true and living God because the Egyptian they believed that they themselves was God we have to be careful there you with me and so here they are traveling they have gone through uh, the wilderness they have gone through the journey they have passed Mount Sinai and now when they vacated Mount Sinai now God demanded them for the first time to do something that was never done something they never heard of you and I tonight are so privy to be able to sit in a beautiful sanctuary such as this one and this beautiful sanctuary that that God of call and gave Elizabeth and Wayne the instruction the blueprint how to build it God gave that to us but here we're gonna be seeing tonight how God gave the blueprint to a man by the name of pastor Moses how to build a mobile sanctuary so as we are seated here tonight in this beautiful sanctuary we are going to be looking at the dimensions that God gave these people Paul to build him a remote or a mobile sanctuary I love the what God said to them in the first couple of verses he said you're going to build this out of curtain which means you should be able to break it down tomorrow and put it back up Saturday or Sunday as the people travel they bring the church with them few of those things that we're going to be looking at tonight now next thing I want to share with you tonight for you to get this not only did God call them and God introduced to humanity for the first time a sanctuary a place where God meet his people a place where the people come to meet their God Somebody say a sanctuary. sanctuary. Come on, put the table in the north corner. Somebody say put the table in the north corner. Put the table in north now, now, hear this now. Some of the very things that I love about God is the idea of God that he's very specific. You are not a mistake. I am not a mistake. God is very deliberate when it comes to his people who are set aside, set apart for him. Are you with me? Now he's about to tell Moses to create for him a sanctuary that is a remote one or a mobile one. Moses received the instruction and one of the things that I love the most about this instruction upon her is that God went and told them even the very color. Hello somebody. And God's favorite color are the color that was in the sanctuary that Solomon built later on the colors of this mobile sanctuary did not change and if you notice here at Omega Church the color that God gave us are what purple gold and a dash of blue because I've learned this that in the first sanctuary these are the colors that God chose not Moses, not Aaron, not his sister Miriam, nobody else. But God gave him a specific color choice. And that tells me that God is very specific within, in every area of our life. God does not make mistakes. He don't have any need to repeat himself. See, he gave Elizabeth and I this church. He gave us vision for the church. He put it in our spirit. Here we are reading it today that he put it, he told Moses up front. These are the amount of fabric you need. These are the amount of curtain you need. And this is how you need to build the sanctuary. Even though it's a remote sanctuary, these are the things that you need to do. And these are how, the ways how you need to tie the fabric of the sanctuary. And this is how the curtain needs to run a certain way. Hello, somebody. 
And this is God gave in Moses. Now here is Moses, an Egyptian king who became a shepherd boy. God is now giving this man something that Moses in his, in his wildest dream have never thought would be possible. Because Moses now is given the opportunity to build the first sanctuary before Solomon. So all the colors, all the measurements, it was very precise. Somebody said, put the table in the north corner. Put the table <laughs> in the north corner. When, when, when God called you and when God called me, even the very woman, in my case, that I should marry, he put her in my spirit. Put her in the north corner. Somebody said, put the table in the north corner. Put the table in the north corner. God would put Mr. Morris amongst all the men in Moko in my mother's eyes. And he will put Derek Manning in my mother's reach. Because deep down inside of my mother's heart, he knew exactly what he put there. Amen. Now here is Wayne Jonathan Manning from Amity Hall District in Moko Clarendon finding myself in the Netherlands Antilles and I met this girl under the Gineb tree. How many girls have I drove by from Sheraton Hotel in St. Martin to go to the French side how many stores have I stopped? How many restaurants have I stopped? How many girls I work with in this Port de Plaisance, Port of Plaisant in French? But why and how be it that I must be at a specific time driving along the Guinep tree in French Quarter that there would be a girl named Elizabeth looking for a parrot? Looking for a parrot, a bird. And that bird just happened to fly away because a kid from Jamaica, a teenage boy from Jamaica is driving down the road in a company van at the right place at the right time. Somebody said, put the table in the north corner. Put the table <laughs> in the north corner. I love God because God map out your destiny. And that's why when God put people in your heart, and when God put the people you should marry, the people you should love, the people you should be around in your heart, he put them in reach. If God can be so specific to Moses with the fabric of the tabernacle, he's going to put your wife in front of you, Paul. And all the girls that you knew in, in what is it, St. Catherine High School, not one of those girls would marry you except Nyoka. Hello, somebody. Put the table in the north, Put the table in the north corner, Jarrell. You know that's your girl. You know God gave you a star. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You know God gave you a star. Somebody said, Put the table in the north corner. Put the table in the north corner. Amen. So I had to pass Guinep tree, the Guinep tree in French Quarter at a specific time because I must see Elizabeth. I've worked with fine girls at the office. You know what I mean? But God have a Elizabeth for Jonathan in French Quarter. And I had to leave Jamaica to find her. Not that we don't have fine babes in Jamaica. But somebody said put the table in the north corner. Put the table God is a God of order. God is a God that thinks about your future and my future. And if we can only show up at the Guinea tree at the right time, good God Almighty. <laughs> Paul, we will live to see the benefit of God in our life. We've got to be at the right place at the right time with the right languages and the right people. Don't miss out on it. Every one of you that is in this class tonight, those that are listening on radio and those that are viewing on television, it, it had to be that we are connected tonight. Out of all the places that you could have been, we, 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 we were predestined to connect tonight in this Bible class. Hello. And I want you to see God as the builder, the orchestrator, 
the one who put your life together put the table in the north corner so so we understand now that god called moses to what to build a portable sanctuary and god began to tell moses where to put the furnitures where to put even the very table and if god can be so specific with moses where to put the table not in the south corner not in the west corner hello somebody not in the east corner but the only table that god is telling moses to put in the sanctuary god is telling him exactly geographically where to put the table i believe that if god is so specific to do that i believe he's more specific and deliberate with your life your future and your destiny yes. come on talk to me tonight so let's go to verse one so the tabernacle which you understand is a church we understand it was a portable church because they were on the go they have went around the wilderness for how long how many years 40 years and they stayed in egypt for 400 years these were people that, that, that come to know God. Some of the generation that was there with Moses. When, when, Moses told, when God told Moses to build a sanctuary. It's Bible class. Is that right? Most of that generation did not have a clue what is a sanctuary. Most of that generation did not know what to do in this sanctuary. Come on with me now. So God gave him the specific colors, gave him the specific dimension, just like he gave to Father Noah. Oh high, oh wide, oh deep. And this is a constant thing that every week they got to set up shop, set up church, and move as they travel along. They're traveling from Miami to the borders of, uh, of, of where? Georgia? And as they go along for 40 years, every week, they got to break down the sanctuary and put it back up. And they have to put it back up in a specific colors, specific order. Come on with me now. I don't know if the engineer can put on the screen for me uh, a sanctuary. Amen. So we can take a look at first century sanctuary. Let's go to the 33rd verse. Read it for me, Minister Upon. Amen. says and thou shalt hang up the veil under the clasp and shall bring it hither within the veil the ark of the testimony okay number one the ark of the testimony must be in a specific area hello come on somebody that's what god said now we don't share testimony much today do we because for many different reasons but you can never not have a testimony Amen. so god is saying build me this sanctuary exodus 26 correct now i want you to put the testimonies in of the people on the testimony of what god has done in a specific area then i want you to put now the ark of the covenant in a specific area and then he's going to tell you i want you to put a certain table in a specific area area now my question is how many of you tonight have a testimony Hallelujah. how many of you tonight have a testimony Hallelujah. how many of you have a testimony what is a testimony i think that's a real question deacon i heard you said you have a testimony let me hear what your testimony is you have a testimony what is your testimony? Well, my testimony is where God take me from and where he's bringing me to because my testimony was in a, in a different order from now because when I was growing up, amen, I didn't understand, amen, the word of God. I know the word of God, but I didn't understand. But now, since I'm saved, amen, things I used to do, I do them no more. Mm -hmm. My testimony is wrong, but I'm going to make it short. Things I used to do, I do them no more. 
places I used to go, I go there no more. I've been through hell and back. Amen. And I could have been dead long time ago. But the grace of God. Amen. So I have to give him the praise. My testimony is that. Amen. All right. Let's give Deacon a wonderful round of applause. Now, God said, put the testimony in this corner. But let's go a little bit further. Anybody else? What Deacon sh share with us tonight? Uh, here is a picture on the screen of the tabernacle that they had to build every week. But I'm going to get right back to that. All right, let's, let's address that. This, 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 this is a good picture here because the tabernacle is of such. One thing that you will see as it relates to the column uh, uh, of the uh, tabernacle is columns. Here we have a column that's split in half. Painted with brass gold. Where did I get that idea from? I know many of you come here to church and never thought about it. It's because I learned this from the word of God. Over to the right and the left, we have two big columns. And if you read along tonight with Apana, amen, some of those things that they were to put in this remote or mobile sanctuary, columns was mentioned and how to paint the columns. So these are not stumbling coincidences. As a matter of fact, these columns, and I got them from a Jewish synagogue. I share a testimony with you. Now here are the dimensions that God said how wide the tabernacle should be where the altar should be and the different kind of fabric that you will use in the altar and the different color you should use in the altar and where the people should stay in the altar two other things that we read tonight in exodus the 26th chapter tonight is the next thing that we also read there is the ark of the covenant what was in the ark of the covenant the ten commandments now we are reading in this verse that we just addressed there, verse, the 33rd verse. Now he's talking about a testimony. Uh, what deacon has just shared with us tonight, uh, with all due respect, I love my deacon, but that's not necessarily a testimony. That is a historical journey and a historical fact in his life that God, how God deliver him, where God deliver him from, and some things that God has done for him. But that's not a testimony. But whatever is a testimony deacon. We need to put it in this corner. What's a testimony? And I know many of us in this class. And many of us have gone to testimonial service. And, and people start preaching for a testimony. That's not a testimony. How many of you have gone to services of the services and they start singing song for a testimony? That's not a testimony. And you have gone to service of the service and they read scriptures of the scriptures. That's beautiful what you're doing. It's all religious activities that you're doing. Learn behavior. Learn habits. And that's why here at Omega Church, God called me and said, I want you to build me a non-denominational church. I want you to follow and imitate and impersonate Yeshua the Christ, the Holy One of Israel. I do what I see him do. Even the very column here in the front of Omega Church, I impersonate that because it's taken from the Bible. So the question is, what is this testimony that God is telling Moses to put it in this specific area? What is a testimony? Anybody? You see, we have done a lot of old school things over the years, Deacon Miller. But it's not Bible. We have behaved a certain way over the years because we have learned behaviors. And we adapt those learned behaviors and call it Christianity. But, but we, we get in this thing twisted. Christianity, these were people in the Middle East, in the New Testament, of the Jesus Christ walked here, there, and the Apostle Paul going around, they were acting like Jesus. They was acting like Christ. They was acting Christ-like. It was a nickname. Are you with me? Let's go back to testimony. What's a testimony, Paul? Evangelist Paul. 
What's a testimony? Well, Bishop, you know, I believe. Yes. Deacon, I'm giving his, um, his, his statement. I believe testimony is, uh, it's not nec- I won't say necessarily the word of God, but I believe a testimony is, is a statement given. Whether, I believe it's whether it's written or spoken, that, that eventually will come to pass and declare the word of God. I, I, when um, the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments, he gave him a written, a written, I, I, you can say the written word for his people. And when it comes to pass, we can say that testimony of God. God, it was delivered for God's people. So I believe a testimony is, 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 is something that is written that the Lord gave you to give to his people. And then eventually it shall come to, if it comes to pass, then it is indeed a testimony. Okay, that, that is, a, is a testimony of a statement. But the testimony that I am talking about is still different. Like for example, let's go back to something that Deacon said. And I believe that it's important that we that belong to Christ, when we speak, we speak with authority and clarity. Make sense? Deacon says just now, he said, the places I used to go, I do not go them no more. That's deliverance. Why you don't go there no more? Because God deliver you from that That's a deliverance. Amen. Uh, the places I used to go, I don't go there no more. The reason why you don't go there now is because you're saved. And God deliver you from going to the discotheque. <laughs> and God deliver you from going to the nightclub. The Lord. That's deliverance, correct? But that's not a testimony. It's a part of your history where God deliver you from. See? Friends I used to keep, I don't keep them no more. You can't keep them no more because God put light in you and darkness still in them. <laughs> so you don't want to be around them because now you was blind, but now you can see. You see their habits, you see their faults. You don't want to be there no more. I love you, honey, but now I'm saved. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? And so, so a testimony is something that God deliver you out of. You have been in a test. And here's another problem that I observed over the years. Is that someone have not been delivered out of the test. But you stand up to testify. You don't have a testimony. Sit down. Praise God. You have a good idea of a testimony. But it's not a testimony. Amen. We're not talking about a testament of something. We're not talking about a statement of a testimony. I'm talking about a life experience. You've been in hell. And God deliver you from something. And when and only when the test is over, now it becomes your testimony and a very specific testimony. Are you with me? Amen. I've been in a financial hole and I pray and I believe God to send me a miracle and it came true for me. I was a womanizer and I like to plenty woman and I've been a womanizer all my life but now I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I can share my testimony that I have one wife. Testimony. God delivered me from there. I'm not looking at every other other girls. Are you not looking at every other man? You get the idea? Testimony. I was an alcoholic and I was I a custom of drinking alcohol and da 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 and I you know what I mean? You see all the difference? So your testimony can be deliverance too. But a testimony, not, 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 not while you or you had cancer and God heal you. But not while you're not yet healed, you're given a testimony that you heal. And somebody will say, well, I'm speaking those things that are not as if they... Now you're being prophetic. Amen. You're speaking life. And that's good. But that's not your testimony. You don't have a testimony until it's over. And by the time it's over and you get over that evangelist Paul, here comes the devil again messing with you again. See? So I was, I was born and raised in the triumphant church of God. And I have seen that kind of behavior. And many of you who are from the island or from the black church or the black churches, we, we, we make these mistakes. You know, we make these mistakes. I was blind, but now I can see. 
That's a testimony that God healed you. You was a blinded person. But when someone said, I was blind, but now I can see, that's not what they meant. What exactly they meant? You say it because somebody said it before you. <laughs> and it sounds good. No, I believe that God is teaching the children of Israel here some specific things. And he said, bring the testimony in there as well. What's a testimony? What does God deliver you from? If you're still going through the test, you ain't delivered. God did not deliver you yet. But I'm believing that God will deliver you. I'm believing that God will deliver me. See? And so that's why the Apostle Paul, he addressed those things that, you know, when you're a child, you, you behave like a child. But when a Christian become old in the faith and you really want to go to heaven, it's very important that we get rid of childish behavior. It's important that we get away, get away from those things that we, we used to do when we were nothing. But now that we're saved, sanctified, bonified, glorified you in Jesus Christ, we begin to speak differently. Amen. So what's your testimony? And when you come out of the testimony, then you share it. You know what I mean? And, and so you share a completed testimony. Not a test that you're going through. Now, when you, when you are still going through the test and you get up to give a testimony of something, you just expose yourself to the devil for him to slap you. He was slapping you already. But now he's going to slap you even more because he still have you going through hell. And you get up with yourself going through hell to share a testimony that the devil is keeping you in. But you ain't get deliverance yet. But when you get delivered from it, now you can open your mouth and glorify God and say, how oh God help me to overcome this. How oh God deliver me from this. How oh God change this. How oh God fix this. You see what I mean? And now who gets the glory and who gets the praise? Come on, somebody talk to me. Who gets the glory and who gets the praise? So let's go back to the 33rd verse again for me, Minister Apollo. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the clasps, and shalt bring it hither within the veil of the ark of the testimony. Mm -hmm. And the veil shall separate unto you between the whole... So you put the testimony where? In the ark of the testimony. Yes. Is that what it said? Yes. Anyone, is that the King James Version you're reading from? Yes. No, who has the King James Version? Let's take a look at the King James Version. Let's go back to King James. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony. Okay. In the most holy place. See it? Now, can I re make a recommendation for the class and for everyone viewing online? Always go to the King James Version. If anything, you go to the NIV next. The King James Version is very poetic, number one. Number two, it is the most authentic early writings of the translation of the word of God. Yes? 50 scholars were put together in the United Kingdom in one room, in one place. And their sole job, they spoke five different languages. And their sole job was to do what? Translate Greek, Aramaic, Latin to English. So the original King James, now they have the revised King James Version. I pray... I can only make recommendation. I can't tell you what to do. You're all big people, even though you're my spiritual children. But I make rec recommendation that go to the first, the first print of the word of God in English that you and I have. Because remember, the same people that wrote the NIV version is the same people that wrote the gay Bible. So I don't trust their integrity. I do not trust their integrity, but I'm not preaching this as law. I can only make what? Recommend. It's an easier read. But I guarantee you, if you look at the word of God, verse by verse, line by line, precepts by precepts, it's different in definition. When you try to read the two. So let's go to the, let's go to the King James version of verse, the 33rd verse. Read it in the King James. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches that thou mayest bring in the hither within the veil of the ark of the testimony 
And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. Okay. Now, let's take a look at that again. Let's go back to the 33rd verse. And read it now and then. Leave up the 33rd verse in the original King James Version. And then I'd like you to read it for us tonight, Minister Apana, in the NIV Version. And I am not asking you to do that in order to make a quarrelsome argument between the two. But I believe you yourself can identify what I am trying to say. Read the, read the NIV version. Hang the curtain from the class and place the Ark of the Covenant law behind the curtain. Okay. The, Go ahead. The curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. And go to the King James Version now again. Is this a King James version we have here? King James. Okay. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony. Okay. Go back to the ark. Within the veil, the ark of the testimony. You can observe in your own time, verse by verse, do the comparison between the two and you will see where I'm getting to. Stick to that original King James Version if you can. If you can get around the die and the D and just, you know, but the revelation is important. So what did he say now about the Ark of the Testimony? What you, should you do again with the Ark of the Testimony? What did he say? Mm -hmm. He said, and thou shalt hang up the veil under the torch that thou mayest bring him thither within. The veil, the Ark of the Testimony. We already talked about testimony, right? Read on. And the veil shall what? Divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. So come with me now. Three different things he just told him. The ark of the testimony should be right here. There should be a veil between it. Correct? Yes. A little cubicle. Yes? Yes. And then over now he's going to say for you to divide two other areas. And what are those two other areas? The holy place. Re say that again. The holy place. The holy place. So, and then after that, it said something else after the holy place. The what most is holy. the most holy? So, what is the difference in the 21st century between the holy place? We have already addressed the testimony. What is the difference today with the holy place and the most holy place? Let's start tonight. Comparing to the Joshua and Moses that we did last week. It's a place where Joshua was able to receive along with Moses. But the most holy was where Moses received all of God's glory. Good point. Let's bring up the Ark of the Covenant. Now here is God. He's saying, look, this is what you need to do. In this remote or mobile church that you got to break down and put up every week. At one point, Omega Church was meeting in a hotel. Deacon, you remember those days. Paul, you remember those days. And we got to break down every week, Pastor, and put it up every week. But you remember, we were in the hotel while we were waiting to close on this building. And we were doing what God is telling Moses to do. Break down the church, put up the church. Put up the church. You know what I mean? Now, here is God dividing three areas, four areas in the sanctuary, in the inner court. One is the Ark of the Testimony. Two separation which is the holy place not everybody and anybody go into the holy place and no one go into the holies of holies only the priests and they would put a chain around his, their, their, their waist and some of the leaders would stay outside while there was a rope hung around his waist while he entered into the holy of holies but they were able to stay in a holy place. And they will give them a rope as they walk into the holies of holies. And if, he's, if, if that priest is not living right. And they don't hear the bell moving anymore. What happened? He's dead. <laughs> God kill him. <laughs> oh, I see. You see? So, so God have some structure in place. And then the next place he said now is the most holy. My question tonight is. Why would God define the most holy? Why would God suggest the holy place? And why would God describe the Ark of the Covenant, where it should be, why it should be there? 
And why would God tell Moses to separate these things? Today in the house of God, today you tell somebody you can't be on the altar. They won't come back to church. They say you talk to them about, talk to them bad. You can't be on the altar. But can you imagine God is giving Moses and his leaders this instruction what they should and what they should not do? How many of you do believe that we serve a holy God? Hallelujah. Oh, you're not talking to me tonight. It's Bible class where you can talk to me. All right, so let's take a look now at the holy place. What exactly are some of the many definitions of the holy place? The holy place is a set-apart place for religious rites or religious practices. This halter is a holy place. People need deliverance. They come and meet the manservant or the woman servant of God. Where? At the, not in the bathroom. Amen. Not in the corridor. Because this place is a place that attract the presence of God. And the presence of God and the leader's life. This is why I don't get it sometimes. And I'm going to say this. And I know many of you may laugh. Many of you may think about it. I never get it, evangelist Paul Robinson. Why people jump from church to church. I'm going to tell you why. I never get it, Deacon uh, Alvin Miller. Because if you jump from one church and go to somebody else's church and they're not living right, them sleeping around, then commit, then committing homosexual activity, them sleeping with the young girls them in a the church, huh? they have bad spirit and you let that person lay hands on you and you have a clean, decent pastor or bishop or apostle that's living right, but him not, he don't, he's not prophetic, he's not X, Y, Z. And you jump around from place to place because some people learn the church habits and they're very good at the church habits. But that don't necessarily mean that they are people of integrity. And when you go from place to place and have the wrong people laying hands on you in the bathroom and all kind of spirit jump on you and you start acting funny. I'm going to leave that alone. I told you I was going to leave it alone, right? So wherever God assigned you to be, you stay faithful there. That's where you're going to get your growth. That's where you're going to get your blessing. And I am not trying to say you can't go and visit somebody else's church. And I'm not teaching you that you can't go to a revival in Timbuktu. Or if you're traveling on vacation and you feel like going to church while you're on vacation, you can't go. But you're not going to be careless because you don't know them. Should I leave that alone? So the holy place is a set apart religious place, yes, where, 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 where that is in right standing with God that is doing things, the holy place. And in this ark, in this tabernacle, this specific room, bring up the ark of the covenant for me, the ark, the, the, the tabernacle again for me on the screen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Grace. Thank you for joining us at Bible study. Now let's take a look at this. This is another example or blueprint of the tabernacle that we're looking at that God is telling Moses to build. Now, you see over here, this one looked like the Ark of the, the Covenant. And this is where the Ten Commandments are kept. But look at these different things in the inner court. You see them? And God is telling them to put them. I want you to take your eyes and look at this little table in the corner. Now, God told them to put one table in one corner in a specific area and paint it gold. Do you want to sleep tonight or are you getting something from this class? Are you with me tonight? So let's look at the most holy. What, what happens in the most holy part of this tabernacle that God called Moses to build in Exodus 26 chapter? What happened? This is where God is exalted. This is where worthy, where worthy devotions are taking place. And then God began to tell Moses how the priests ought to dress. I don't know about you. you know, I was talking to, I think my kids them the other day and they were showing me somebody on TikTok. Anybody know TikTok? TikTok? Is it TikTok? Or one of them? 
and they do these little 60 seconds are uh, real and there was this this preacher on there mrs manning and he was in his tight skinny skinny jeans and his tight short sleeve shirts uh, shirt and 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 I, 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 we're non-denomination we don't we don't mess with people but i think it's very important here that i ask you to take a look at that now they were telling me he have a lot of young people that following him daddy i said awesome so, uh, i'm looking i'm looking <laughs> i'm looking i'm looking at, at this guy now and and I said, oh my God. It looked like he lifts weight and, and he have a sexy body, you know. And his, his muscles pumping out through his shirt. And, you know, his, 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 his pants tight. I wear skinny jeans. It's a fashion. But he was on the altar, buddy, and he was preaching up a storm and he's presenting God's word. I mean, but when I look at this positive scripture now and God is teaching those who deliver the word of God in the Holy of Holies, he said they have to dress a certain way modest. And this young preacher, he's doing a good job, praise God. He's, he's attracting people that I can't reach because I wear, I wear mine skinny jacket, but it's not very skinny, but it's almost skinny. <laughs> you know? But he's reaching people and I'm not here tonight to discredit anybody because God work, I don't always understand what God is doing when he's doing it. He's drawing people from left, right and center. But the point I'm trying to make tonight is this. Do you think that God have a specific order for his man servants and his woman servants? Do you agree tonight or you don't? Yes. 100%. Did God change his mind? Did God fall down along the way? He asks us even to dress modest. You wouldn't see me come up here with that, uh, with my sleeve up here, and and yeah, I'm a bodybuilder on Mon Sunday morning. Yeah, check this out, check this out. I have the rock. I love my skinny jeans too. I took it took me a long time before I put one on. I think it was funny, you know. Eventually, I start wearing my, 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 my skinny jeans, but I'm very careful where I wear it, how I wear it, because I'm still a, an apostle. You understand? But God is teaching us here now. So when you look at the holy, the most holy now is the exalted area and the most worthy worship and devotion. That's where it takes place. You, you see that? So there's an inner court, there's an outer court of worship. Yes, and the inner court is where God meet the priest that is allowed to go in there. And we read that before that Aaron was one of those priests. Amen. Now, the, the last part of the 33rd verse that we'd like to look at now. Let's go to verse 34. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. So what is the mercy seat? Anybody? Bring up the Ark of the Covenant for me. Now, now God is about to tell, there it is. It's the lid of that is the top portion of the cover that the Ark of the Covenant, which carries the Ten Commandments. God was so unique and so specific then that he wanted his children to have respect and honor for the Ten Commandments. The common man couldn't read the Ten Commandments then. And what did he say again, verse 34, with that? He's talking about the lid. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon mm. the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. Yes. So the mercy seat, what is the mercy seat now? That is something, the top. So this, this, this little emblem that you're looking at, remember in those days, you see the two sticks? Only one group of people could touch it. It's only the Levites, so you take four Levites to carry this. And they have to carry it in a specific order, say it God. One would need to put one portion of the stick here in the front, on one part of their shoulder, and the other side on the other part of their shoulder, and the other two Levites, which means they come from 
the tribe of Levite, which is the Leviticus priesthood, where the priest comes from. In this case, that would be the Manning family here. You understand? See? So the Manning family that belongs to the Leviticus or a, 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 a tribe there, they pass off the priesthood and they would be able to carry it. You see it? Now here is an arrow describing where the mercy seat was. Now here is my question tonight in this class. Do you think that God will go through the extremity to describe these things how he wants it? Unless there is some specific reason behind it. What about today? Do you think God, God is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? Yes. So God is a God of what? Water. Amen. But let's go to verse 35 and there we can wrap it up tonight. Read verse 35. And thou shalt set the table without the veil, mm -hmm. and the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle mm -hmm. towards the south. And thou shalt put the table on the north side. Somebody said, put the table on the north side. Put the table <laughs> on the north side. You finally get it? Now, Minister Paul, God told him where to put the testimony, the ark of the testimony, where to put the holy, where to put the most holy. And now he's telling them to put this table in the same area, but put it where? God didn't say put it on the south side. God didn't say put it on the west side. He didn't say put it on the east side. He said you should put it on the north side. I believe that God has a specific plan for your life. I believe that God has a specific plan for your future. I believe that God has a specific design for you. Put it on the north side. But if we put things in our life on the south side, you ain't going to find it there because God said put it on the north side. How do we put things on the south side? Disobedience. Disobedience. Walking contrary. Walking in errors. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy to do less than what God wants you to do. To be less than who God wants you to be. I believe that God have a design plan. I make the joke just now with Pastor Elizabeth. How she had to be under the guinea tree looking for a parrot. Because I am driving the company vehicle. Young kid from Jamaica driving down. I had to pass the guinea tree at the right time. And I have to see her and amongst all the girls that I have met, all the girls that I have known over the years, I had to see her. Because God is putting something on the north side for me. And I knew quite well that at the right time, if it's God's will for my life, and that's a table that God is putting in my life on the north side, I am going to find this girl. I block the road, I create crazy Jamaican havoc there in St. Martin. They curse me, they call me names, they did all kind of things. But the Lord was my shepherd and I see what I want and I wasn't moving. I was breaking the law. But it's a good time to break the law. If they throw me in jail, I didn't care. But something inside of me tell me that she's the one. Strange. She was just a teenage girl looking for a part. You understand me? I went back to the hotel about 45 minutes away parked the company vehicle didn't even clock out from work that day jump in my Trans Am my night rider and I was so big those days I was 180 pound muscular solid as a rock I leave even my car the window down and the T roof off so when I'm going in my car I don't even open the door boy when you're young you do foolishness praise the Lord <laughs> Amen. I used to jump over the window, jump in my car, speed off, went right back to French Quarter. I have to go do an investigation because I'm putting the table in the north corner. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I went back to French Quarters. I drove about an hour and a half or about an hour and 20 minutes in traffic. And I went there. I went to the gas station. I went to the corner. I went back to the same spot. 
I asked the little corner store, do you know this girl? One thing I know about her, she had plenty of eyebrows. But that was a mandate for the family because all her family, most of her family is like that. Went to the gas station, went to the Chinese store. Everybody told me, no, no, no. I later learned that she got in trouble later on when she go home. Nobody would tell me and I describe her because she left a trademark in my heart. Are you with me? And I went home and I prayed a young Christian. I said, Lord, let me see that girl again. Please, God. And I fasted and prayed next week. Lord, I need to see that girl again. There's something about that girl. She's in the north corner, man. Put the table in the north corner. God is putting some things together, man, for my future. Several years went by. I never saw her again. I was at the same Sheraton Port de Plaisance hotel working. And a hurricane came. I was running my store on the side. I had a van and it destroyed. Somebody said, put the table in the north corner. Put the table in the north corner. They closed the hotel, but I had my store on the side. I'm always hustling. I'm not lazy. One of my van windshield was damaged. And I heard the spirit of God say to me, come, let's go for a drive. I didn't fuss. I didn't fight. I believe that God is putting something in the north corner. And I took off and I went driving and I'm driving down the road and I came to the middle of a crossroad and I saw this brown van on the side of the road. That's how many years later that was, baby? Three years later. Can you imagine? Never stopped praying for this girl. And I've met so many like her. <laughs> but they are not her. I was... <sighs> There was no Wayne, there was no Junior, there was no Liz Chesedek, there was no Hortensia. But I felt something, Mom, I felt something. That God is doing something. So that day I just went after the hurricane, everything is destroyed. And God put, tell me, go drive. And I'm driving down the road looking for a windshield. Drove about 30 minutes from my store. I had about four stores on the island. John Wayne Supermarket, that's me. Import everything from Jamaica and bring it there. Grace Kennedy, Excelsior, seasoning, anything from Jamaica, I bring it there. Praise God. Amen. So I saw this vehicle park on the side of the world and um, I came down and I stopped and I parked behind them. And uh, I parked there. That time I was, I was driving a Ford Escort, brand new Ford Escort, painted lime green, Mama Ruby. Praise God. Company van lime green, pickup truck lime green. You can't miss John Wayne coming from a mile away. Everything lime green. <laughs> and I came out the truck and uh, I walk over to the van. I saw this tall French man with a big mustache. Can't miss him. <laughs> you know, tall. I walk over to him and as I walk over to the windshield, three years later, after the day when I saw my wife under the guinea tree. And I went over to him and said, hey, what you looking for? We exchange. Say, I'm looking for a wing shield. That wasn't even the right van like mine. I had a 40 color line. That was a 40 Aerostar. And I went around and to say hello to the man. Didn't see Elizabeth. Didn't see her mom. I just see this tall French man with a big mustache. Praise God. Walk around and went over the, the hood of the car. I was pushing the, the, the wing shield. And then out of nowhere... The same girl came out and stand up in front of me. And I broke the windshield. I'm looking for a windshield, but I, you know, wow, praise the Lord. You know. But I still, God did not put it in my for me to recognize her. I didn't know it was the same girl under the guinea tree. But I'm free, single, and disengaged. You can't be looking for a wife and you're dating somebody. You gotta wait. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody out there in Radio Land need to hear that. Three years later. You know when I knew? When I found out? They told me where they live. And uh, I realized it's like two or three houses away from the guinea tree. But it never dawned on me. Start going around them. They, she's giving me pork chop. Praise God. I love pork chop. Somebody said put the table in the north corner. Put the table in the north corner. God is putting your situation in the right place tonight. And about another three or four years later, my mom was there. She came and visited me in St. Martin. 
and I went to some event at her aunt's home right by the guinea tree. Somebody said guinea tree. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. It was one year later, so that's four years now. And I was there, my mom was there visiting me from, from the island. And here comes this girl with the same hairstyle four years later. The same way when I was driving that day and she was under the guinea tree. But I was stupid too. I'm not a player. I asked her if I could talk to her while everybody is blowing their horn and say, get out the road four years earlier. And I blocked the road. And she said, for what? And I said, affiliation. I didn't have any lines. <laughs> I didn't know you're not supposed to say that, Paul. Because <laughs> maybe she don't know the answer to that. But she said she went home and looked it up in a dictionary. Praise the Lord. I'm not, I didn't have a line. You know, I'm not a player. <laughs> But now here is this girl coming around. I'm at the beginning tree at her aunt's home right there. And she came around the corner with her hair open. And something inside of me said to me, it's the same girl. After four years and I have sat at their table. I ate with them for Christmas, for Thanksgiving. I ate her pork chop. And I didn't know until that night. Well, you know, the rest is history. The point I'm trying to make here as we close tonight is this. If God can tell Moses to put the table, paint it gold, and put it in the north corner, I am convinced that God will put the pieces of our life in the necessary north corner of our life yes. tonight tonight I believe that God cares about you and cares about me but we can do one of two things evangelist Paul and that's who sent you home for wifey man <laughs> we can do things that prevented God from being God in our life Or we can agree with God and let God take us places that we, no one in our bloodline have ever been. Won't you do it? Won't you do it? Yes. So be responsible. Be responsible with your money. Be responsible with your families. Be responsible with your home. Be responsible with your choices. Be responsible with your decisions. And when you make decisions, stick to it. Be responsible in it. I have never seen God bless anyone that are not responsible. Moses was responsible. And here is the thing I, I really want to encourage you. Can you imagine to break down that tent and put it back up and follow the same instruction every week? And God spoke to Moses when one time. How many times does God need to talk to you and I to line us up? Sometimes I make mistakes along the way. Sometimes you make mistakes along the way. But you pick up the pieces of your life. Dust yourself off and keep going. Because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen. That's Exodus chapter 26 in a nutshell there. That's a tabernacle, Pastor Mars. The old time churches, when you go there, if you're some of the churches in Jamaica, you see a lot of what? Curtains. That's why they still do it. Hello, somebody. What are you taking away from this class tonight? Talk to me. Take a microphone and talk to me. What are you taking away tonight? Hallelujah. Nobody taking away nothing? I must did a very good job or a very not so good job tonight. Come on. Closing thoughts. Um, what I'm taking away is that um, we just have to be obedient and listen to what God tells us to do. Not only on the first time, but like you have to really just sit there and listen. And, you know.
to obey what he tells us to do because he does and says everything to us for a reason. There's always a bigger, you know, purpose that God has for us. So if we're just obedient, then we'll receive every blessing and treasure that we've ever wanted, plus more. So. Amen. I thought you were going to say something about mom and the gnip tree. Kachesi, you look like mom. Um, dad, we do. That's all right. <laughs> you look like mom under the gnip tree. <laughs> Sometimes I see my daughter singing on Sunday morning and say, Dad, look like the girl under the gnip tree. I still love you, Pastor Elizabeth. Anybody else? We've been married now since 2000. I'm rubbing in big people stuff now, right, Mama Ruby? <laughs> Paul, what are you taking away tonight, sir? What stood out? Talk to me. Yes, right. what stood out? What are you taking away tonight? You know, Bishop, um, while we talk, while we read the different scriptures, mm -hmm. and we're talking about where the Lord wants to take us and where he wants to place us. You know, while Moses was faithful, getting the word once and following the simple instructions, I believe this scripture is telling us tonight that whatever our circumstances is or what they are sometimes the Lord talk to us and tell us where we need to stand mm -hmm. but because we are always in disobedience we never follow the simple blueprint or the instructions say that again for me man of God the what what kind of print the blueprint Jesus and we always miss our blessing in this case Moses tell his people that they are supposed to build this tabernacle unto him and he gave them this, the particles and the description where he's to place everything. Just like, he, just like the Lord tell us in our lives where we must stand, what church we must go, how we must pray and praise him, and what is all, all the blessing we are supposed to give to him. But because we are in disobedience, we tend to miss our blessing because sometimes we are not standing or we are not placing ourselves in the north side or in the north corner the Lord may want us and because of that we, we tend to miss hearing what he's he, uh, the word he has for us mm -hmm. so tonight I, I, I what I get from it is this that we need to be obedient by listening to the word of the Lord if he said we're supposed to be at the north side or the north corner then that's the way we need to face if he said that we're supposed to build I alter unto him. That's what we are to do. We're not supposed to make things up. Amen. We need to just follow the blueprint. Because in, everybody has a blueprint in their life. Because the Lord makes us unique for a purpose. That's deep, Paul. Every one of us. Every one of us. Amen. So I believe that's what I, I take from this. And that's why I share my testimony with Pastor Elizabeth. Because she's part of that blueprint. I found her. We agree, we disagree, but I love her. She tells me she loves me. I don't know about that, but... She's still with me. <laughs> Picking on you, baby. It's true. Deacon, what are you taking away from this class, sir? Um, I enjoy the part that is, was talking about the Levites. It's just like when you build in your cabinet. Amen. I believe that God gives you specific leaders that you should put in position. Amen. One that you sometimes it take times, but according to your obedience amen everything will fall into place but i believe that some of us here are levites amen okay. praise god anybody else don't let me rob you the opportunity tonight amen star see you smiling over there and enjoying yourself what are you taking away you and your husband from this class That's it. Simple. There's a blueprint. I want to hear what your opinion is, Mr. Jarrell. What are you taking away tonight, sir? And by the way, thank God, I notice you guys are getting more and more faithful. You know, keep up the good work. Amen. Praise God. Can we give them a round of applause? Amen. Uh, what I'm taking away from is God got a plan for all of us. 
So we should not close one ear and have one open. Whatever direction he points for us, we go. We don't question it. Just follow him. Amen. Let the church say. Amen. You know, I want to thank God for all of you tonight. There's a testimony, Deacon. You remember when we came here to buy this facility? The city of Coral Springs and the previous owners, they had $1.5 million of lien on the property. You all remember? We prayed, we had meetings, we, we asked God for a miracle. And, and they were saying, you know what? You, you cannot close except you reconcile these liens. Although those liens were not ours, were they? And we prayed and we asked God, Lord, I know the city is just doing what they think is right, you know, and we, th there's an absentee uh, seller. But God, we, we, we sat here for about two years waiting and waiting somebody all of you are witness of that yes. we waited we sat here we've been here now about four years going on four years but two years of those things we waited here as a tenant and god brought us in and give us a place to it become so so bad that i asked god god i can't be going to the hotel man waiting for this thing to close so either God, you're going to make this the seller, allow us to stay rent free or give us the freedom to get another property. And we spoke to them, we prayed and God allow us to come here and have church. I mean, the other guests that was here, they make us very uncomfortable, but thank all of you for being very kind very courteous in spite of the hostility that was shown towards us because god favor make people mad you know that yeah, that's true. they're paying but we're here free waiting to be closed somebody say favor, favor. i must get, tell the lord thank you but we prayed and we asked god for a miracle two years went by this building was listed for four million dollars and 1.5 million dollars on top of the four million dollars in debt to the city and we pray and just ask god god we need a miracle we need a miracle we need a miracle we need a miracle we waited we prayed we fasted we believed i went to bank after bank and bank don't want to give us the finances and god work a miracle two part come on somebody you ought to bless the lord put the table in the north corner somebody Get it together, get it together, get it together, get it together. Hallelujah. And we went to the magistrate and God was so merciful. They dropped the lien on the property from $1.5 million to $15,000. Hello somebody. Come on, somebody. And the second part to this testimony, they dropped the sale price from four million to two point five million. Come on, who could have done that? Jesus testimony. I'm testifying about the goodness of Wayne. No, the goodness of Jesus. The goodness of God. The next thing I did. The seller said to me, Mr. Manning, say yes, sir. I'll carry the finances. You ought to be praising God. I'll carry the finances so you are able to purchase this dream house that is called a sanctuary. So you can bless me and people can come and bless me and I will bless them. So here I am now. It's over. And what am I talking about now? It's a testimony of what God has done. Thank you so much tonight for being here. Come on, put your hands together for yourself tonight. Amen. Thank you so much for coming to Bible study tonight. 
want to thank you all online everyone that's on online those of you that are viewing those of you that are listening listen thank you so much for coming to our bible class our bible class is every thursday night from 7 p.m until 8 p.m but sometimes i get excited and i go overboard they don't put me up here to preach till about 7 30 so by by 8 30 or so um, i'm coming down amen thank you so much for listening tonight but listen come on let somebody tell the lord thank you we are going through the word of god the irrevocable word of god the bible and i'm here at uh, at the headquarter and as we prepare to leave i pray that you know jesus as your lord and savior amen but listen we want to challenge you right where you are right now to give an offering come on just go to the online portal right where you are and give an offering because this ministry you heard me i share the testimony amen it requires resources it requires finances to keep it going so those of you that are online those of you that are listening on the radio just go to your st the station where you are go to your bank where you are and uh, just look for those of you that are going to the bank wherever you are look for omega church broadcasting network wherever you are or listen there are some easier ways amen if you go to our website the omega church.com click on give and there you can give we guarantee you that your your seeds your offerings your sacrifices help us to pay the mortgages pay the light bill pay the water bill pay the radio bill to keep the ministry on the air amen you can use cash up it's a dollar sign w-o-i-b 1019 cash up dollar sign w-o-i-b 1019 and of course you can use givelify or you can use zelle everybody has zelle most banks around the world utilize zelle the telephone number to the Zell to the church is 954-773-4444. Amen. And for those of you that are here, I release you to come and bless the Lord tonight. I'm the first to put something in the plate. Thank you so much. And may God richly, richly bless all of you tonight. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for yourself. And this is where we're signing off online, but you can go and take care of that right now. Come on, children of God. Come on and bless the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, everybody. Amen. Good night, everyone.